Roberts, we grow. We practice spiritual disciplines to deepen our relationship with God. At Roberts, we're being transformed through worship, study, and fellowship. The Holy Spirit works within the community, providing a transformation of lives. At Roberts, we are witnesses. Our lives tell the story about the love of Christ through our service, deeds, and love. Welcome to Roberts. Good morning. These are the morning announcements. Happy birthday to all our May celebrants. I encourage everyone to check out the newsletter to see the full list of birthdays. Give our folks a call or send them a card wishing them a happy birthday. We would like to continue to solicit your prayers for our community and our extended community. Receive word this week that Brother Robert Williams, the brother of Billy Williams, passed in his sleep this week. As you are led, please pray and encourage Billy and his family. We also received word that your former pastor, Reverend Charlie Roberts, has been hospitalized. We solicit your prayers for my brother in ministry. To members of the communications committee, there are some emails out there that contains proposals that require your attention. We solicit you to check your emails and send your feedback as soon as possible. In light of the governor's orders this week, I'm asking the members of the Healthy Church team to meet next Saturday, May 22nd at 11 a.m. Our worship committee would like to meet on Monday, May 24th at 7 p.m. Please mark your calendars. Today, we conclude our worship series, Living the Resurrection. Next week, we'll begin a new series entitled Spirit, poured out. If you've been paying attention, we have been providing you with extra material for your personal reflection and growth. So I want to encourage you to, to engage with these in, in resources and there are some scriptures and prayers and meditations for you to review. Finally, you will notice that each week there is a reflection from someone that is not me on the theme of the week. I want you to know see and encourage and understand that we are growing in our discipleship and our witness. In doing so, we should value the voices of other members of the fellowship that we might continue to provoke each other to love and good deeds. Finally, the, new, the windows are back in the sanctuary and they look lovely. Shout out to Brother Bob Hicks and the trustees. And that concludes the morning announcements. Good morning, Roberts. I'm Paula Jones Danley, and I've enjoyed worshiping with you. Please join me for our call to worship. Jesus Christ has ascended into the heavens and sits at your right hand while we are down here laboring, doing the best that we can to survive. God help us. We are keeping our heads above water, but God forgive us, sometimes drowning seems to be an answer. God help us. We keep our faith and trust in you in spite of how we are being treated. God help us. We are abused, misused, and accused. For this reason, we understand more and more that this world is not our home and we are just strangers passing through the night. God help us. God, we are your children and we need you to help us so that our feet won't slip and our faith won't waver. We believe in you and trust in your holy word. Do it, God. Do it today. God help us. Let us pray. Lord, we gather today I'm grateful for the day you have given us and the day that is past. 
Lord, we come this morning knowing that we have made it thus far by your grace. And so, Lord, by your power, in your wisdom, and in your mercy, we ask for you to meet us here today. Lord, we gather today under the banner of testimony that we believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Father, we come this morning asking that you would meet us in worship and free us for joyful obedience. Lord, we come to you in worship this morning knowing that we have expectations that can be fulfilled here as we concentrate on you. And so, Lord, we ask that you would send your spirit to fall fresh on us today. Lord, whether we are in our homes, in our cars, in this sanctuary, wherever we might find ourselves, Lord, we're asking that the spirit of the living God fall on us. That in this worship, the music, the words, the scripture, Lord, may become a part of our living, a part of our doing, might be transformative in ways that we might grow in our discipleship. So we say, come, Holy Spirit. Come into this place. Dwell within us. Anoint us. Fill us up until we overflow so that when this worship ends today, we will not be as we were, that we might be restored, renewed, and revived in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. We count it done, and the people of God say amen, amen, and amen. Please join us in chant spirit of the living God. Fall afresh join us in our opening hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. It is printed in your downloadable bulletin, and the words will appear on the screen. Won't you join your voices with us as we sing, What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
called to proclaim repentance, we are reluctant to look at our own failings. Invited to witness to God's loving forgiveness of sins, we would rather not speak out loud of our own. Let us trust in the one who offers us hope and healing as we pray together, saying, you call us to proclaim a gospel we find difficult to practice, God most high. We watch our clocks to make sure we spend more time with ourselves than with you. We are hesitant to witness to your power from on high as we are uncertain of your presence in our lives. Forgive us, God of light. Fill us with the healing presence of your spirit that we may proclaim your good news as we participate in the life and suffering of our world, as did your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hear the words of assurance and pardon. Choosing to set aside judgment, God, gives us justice. Choosing to let go of punishment, God, fills us with peace. Choosing to release anger, God's steadfast love rests upon us. Forgiven, redeemed, restored, we will tell everyone through the lives we lead what God has done for us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now let us show signs of reconciliation of peace to one another. If you're on Facebook or YouTube, please use the chat box. The peace of God be with you and the responses and also with you. But if you're really, really in tune to what God is doing today in our midst, it's all right to say, in the name of Jesus, I love you. Peace be with you. living the resurrection with the resurrected one at our side. And so we invite Brother Charles Sias to share with us. As we go about our day-to-day -day activities, we are faced with many challenges, whether it be personal, social, economical, or just being ourselves. Let us be perfectly clear, as we walk this line, our Christianity is tested. Sometimes we question God when we face crises, such as when we are sick or in pain, when disaster threatens, when our friends fail us, and many other adverse situations. As a Christian, we need not question the wisdom and grace of God because he is our all in all and will see us through regardless.
Our epistle lesson comes from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. Paul prays, I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what it is, the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the works of his great power? God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his hand his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Our gospel lesson for the day comes from the Gospel of John, the 17th chapter, beginning at verse 6. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them. And they have received them and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I'm asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours and yours are mine. And I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. If I have given them your word and the word has and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. And I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to this world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I send them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they also may be sanctified in truth. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. <laughs> i 
chapter, verses 6 through 19. You know, when I'm asked to pray for someone, it's an honor, and I take it seriously. Sometimes it's a simple request because the person may seem overwhelmed and is looking for assurance that peace is available and normalcy is right around the corner. At other times, there's an issue of health or impending health crises, and the prayer is more intense. Now, I don't have any better access to God than they do, but because of my vocation, I am asked to intercede. I have often heard the remark, I know you can get a prayer through this. That's not the time to argue the point, so I chuckle, but I pray with or for them. And in all circumstances, I am just the intermediary. 
And I am praying to God in the name of Jesus, asking for relief of some sort. Now, Jesus has made it plain in his words that he's the only intermediary we need. But folk insist on asking prayers of me and of others. Perhaps you too have been asked to pray for someone and had similar thoughts. But what would it mean to you if Jesus was praying for you? Would it make a difference in your walk with him? Would it change how you interact with people? Well, in the scripture before us today, Jesus is praying for his disciples, and by extension, he's praying for you and me also. The, top, the context, excuse me, for the scripture is that Jesus is praying to the Father on the eve of his death. This is after the farewell meal and we, the original disciples, plus you and I, get to listen in on an intimate conversation between two members of the Godhead. Jesus is praying to the Father as if he's already gone while yet among his disciples. First, Jesus asked that he be glorified in his Father's own presence with the glory he had in the Father's presence before the world existed. In other words, the death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus will make visible the Father's identity. And as proof of his identity, Jesus is going back to the Father and leads his completed work as testament to his obedience to his Father. The completed work is that he has done everything asked by the Father. Finally, for the sake of this sermon, since the identity of Jesus was made visible in the community as they loved each other, as he loved them, Jesus prays that for all believers would love as they did and ask the Father to protect us from evil. He does not pray for the cosmos of the world, but for the believers in the world. And yes, that includes you and me. Let me explain a little further. The mission of revealing the true God to a community of believers who would take that revelation into the world was completed work. That was it. It's like a relay race. When you hand off the baton to the next runner, Jesus passes the baton and asks the Father to watch over them and us. But since he is returning to the Father to resume, to resume his glory again, the glory that has always been in existence, Jesus will also be watching over us. When Jesus came in the incarnation, he had to leave some of his divinity behind because flesh and blood can I contain the spirit of the word? Now he was going back to his celestial home to assume the role he has held since before time. Remember, John Clare declares, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. John 1 and 2. Andre Krauss puts it this way. He left his mighty throne in glory to bring to us redemption story. But then he died and he rose again just for you and me. See, that redemption story is the work of Christ and is our work also. Redemption is based in love and Jesus reveals in love who God is as the basis for eternal life for all who believe in him. The disciples, as fallible as they were, were transformed as they learned to love as Jesus loved the community of, of believers and were empowered by Jesus to spread that love under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. But remember, Jesus had claimed them as a gift from the Father because they had believed the word of life spoken to them, so they belonged to him. And just as they belonged to him, by extension, we also who believe the words belong to him. So when he prayed for them, to be protected in the work of telling of the love of God made manifest in Jesus Christ, those who do that work are also included. Now, before I lead you astray, this does not mean, sorry, this does not mean in the mission of spreading the message of the kingdom that you're protected from hurt or harm. That's not what Jesus prayed for, nor is it reasonable. Just look at the lives of the apostles as told in the Acts. They were stoned, murdered, and crucified while involved in mission. He prayed, his prayer was particular. 
protect them from evil or the evil one. No, death was not the issue, for all will die. The issue was not being overcome by evil, not having the witness of love tarnished by acts of evil which defile the body of believers and or put a stumbling block in front of a potential believer. Finally, he asked the Father to sanctify them or set them apart in the truth of the word. Are we ready for God to claim us and declare that we are yours, Lord? If we are ready to live this resurrected life with the resurrected one at our side, and I'm not sure we are, but if we are, then there are some things to consider. First consideration is this. God has a claim on everyone who claims to believe in the love revealed in Jesus Christ. That means you have been purchased with a price, the blood of Jesus, and you are a slave who belongs to God. Now, as African Americans with a history of slavery in America, we don't want anything to do with slavery. The image of foul treatment is seared in our minds, and the thought of someone owning us is a perverse, to say the least. But the Apostle Paul tells us that those who belong to Christ are the slaves of Christ. Are you still with me, or did you tune me out? Put the image of a white blue-eyed Jesus out of your mind. Put away the blonde hair and all those Eurocentric images you have seen throughout your life. That's part of the lie told us by a racist world under the domination, under the domination of an evil one. I would not insult you or ask you to bow down to something as offensive as that. The man, Jesus Christ, had to be from the African diaspora based on his lineage. But Beyond that and before that, as God, he has no color. So as we journey in this life, as those claimed by God and sanctified by Christ, we must shake off the shackles of oppression from our minds and claim the real deal. Not some image designed to denigrate us, not some little God powerless to deliver, but the God revealed in the incarnation of Jesus Christ and worship him and him only. Yes, we have been victimized, brutalized, colonized, and ostracized, but we are no less than any other person. We have been made in the image of God, and God declared we are good. God's truth is life, and Jesus' words proclaim a union with the Father that assures us that we too are loved, no less than any other people or more. But we are a part of the redemptive work of Jesus Christ in the world. We who believe the message of Jesus are God's ambassadors. Jesus claimed us in this prayer, and we must claim Jesus as we operate in the mission of love to the world. A world stained by evils of racism and subjugation. But that evil cannot overcome us because Jesus has already prayed for us. Listen again to his words. I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may also be one. The unity of the community of believers is paramount as their witness is the litmus test for the followers of our Christ. Our unity declares the unity of the Son and the Father and will witness that Jesus is the one sent by God. Therefore, Jesus' prayer is that God, Jesus, and the faith community will be one in love. Therefore, the love of God for Jesus, the love of the Father for the Son, will continue in the life of the faith community. And through this love, Jesus will also be present to the community. The faith community then becomes the locus of God's love in the world. Just as the incarnate locus was the locus for the disciples, Jesus displayed that love with the gift of his life. And so our faith community also claims the locus of God for ourselves. And we will claim that as we proclaim that we are yours, God. If our skin is ebony brown, caramel brown, mocha, or dark brown, we are yours. We may celebrate and worship differently or not, but we are yours. Whether our hair is short, 
long, no longer there or in dread, we are yours. From the balls of our feet to the tops of our heads, we are yours. If people don't like our worship style, that's not our problem. It has nothing to do with them. Our worship is for real and is directed towards you. Please accept our praise on this day as we celebrate our life in the resurrected one, the one who left his throne in glory to reveal to us redemption story. The one who was in the beginning with John, with the Father, John said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and nothing came into being without him, and all things exist in him. Be our yours, God. We claim that unity of Father and Son. We claim our relationship to Jesus the Christ. We claim the love that was broadcast for us before the beginning of time. We claim it, and we say we are yours as we go out to do this work. We are yours as we live in this world. We are yours as we are designed to help and to mediate pain and, and anguish. We are yours, God, so be with us. Walk with us. Share with us. Love with us. As we attempt to be your witnesses in a world gone mad, as we begin to, to provoke one another to love and good deeds beyond these walls, but we go into the communities where our witness may not be accepted because we have not ventured there before or because we have not been there in a while. Let us not be impatient in doing what you have called us to do. And yes, there will be pitfalls. Yes, there will be failures. But if you go with us, God, we know that we will spread this word. We know that we have the capacity to live this word. We know that we have you walking with us and protecting us, guiding us and directing us. And so if they don't accept our witness, and if our witness is correct, then we've done our task. So, Father, to those who have committed themselves to living this resurrected life, we thank you. For those who are on the border wondering what this is all about, we ask that you might nudge them to ask questions, to seek you, to find out what it is that we're talking about living in this resurrected life. And for those who have no clue and don't want to have a clue. I say, God bless you. Maybe on another day, maybe at another time, but don't wait too late because tomorrow is not promised to any one of us. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you is my prayer. Amen. <music>
whether you're a man, woman, boy or girl, please accept the invitation that Christ, that Christ has given to you today. Amen. you continue to call us unto you, that you continue to call us toward the mark of the high call in Christ Jesus, that in this journey called life, we are being perfected, that we are learning to love better, learning to live better, learning to give better. And because we are yours, Lord, we pray that your spirit, that Holy Spirit, might endow us with the gift of holiness. That means that we're set apart to do your work. And no, our bodies won't allow us to work for you 24-7. But God would just get in us to give us a portion of each day that we give unto you in service, sharing a testimony, giving a word of comfort, provoking one another to acts of kindness and good deeds. Lord, please continue to work with us. We know that we passed out of judgment into your grace, but we also know that we are not a completed project, Lord. So Father, in thy mercy, continue to mold us and shape us that we might begin to look like the model of Jesus that you called us to be. And while we are modeling that we ask that you might consider those on our sick list, those on our bereavement list, those who have been recently released from hospitals, and those who have tests yet to go next week. That, Father, we might be assured that in the midst of all that life will throw our way, we are still yours, and that you will watch over us. So loving God, in the name of Jesus, we claim your care day in and day out. And we ask, oh God, that you continue to give us that unction to work for thee, that thy name might be glorified, that his name might be honored, this Jesus, your Christ, our Savior. And the people of God can say together, Amen. And Amen. And Amen.
thank you for joining us in worship today. And we pray that something was said that lifted your hearts and your spirits. To think about the God who walks with us, the resurrected one who lives with us in community. So we preach about him, we teach about him, we love him. And we invite you to walk this week with the resurrected one. So unto him who's able to keep us and present us before the throne of God, to the only wise God, our Father, who reigns in union with the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.